Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, extracting the signal from the noise, it's The Cube, covering IBM Edge 2015, brought to you by IBM. Hi everybody, welcome to IBM Edge 2015. This is The Cube, I'm here with Stu Miniman, my name is Dave Vellante, and The Cube is a studio, we go out to the events, we extract the signal from the noise, and we bring to you our audience uh, a flavor for the event. We talk to the guests, we talk to CIOs, IT practitioners, industry technologists, uh, industry analysts, we got a number of those folks coming up. We have a packed two-day schedule here. We're at the, the Sands uh, Convention Center. Las Vegas is the place where all the tech companies go in the spring, they bring their customers in. 6,000 customers here, Stu. And um, really, the Edge show started in Orlando two years ago. This is our third Edge. It really started as a storage show, and now, you know, we were just talking to Dion Newman, the CMO of the STG Group. It's really expanded. The scope really now is not only storage, but System Z, uh, the power, uh, middleware. There's even a little analytics flavor. I saw Inhi Cho Sa is speaking on the main stage. So, a lot of IBM clients, uh, a lot of IBM executives, industry ecosystem, and a growing show. Yeah, Dave, uh, as you said, it's our third year doing IBM Edge, and uh, it, it's grown and matured. It's interesting to watch IBM this year uh, has really been consolidating some of their shows. We were at Interconnect earlier this year, which kind of was you know, cloud and uh, you know, some of the other pieces put together. Uh, and this show, as you said, uh, you know, heavy storage, power, Z, middleware, uh, pulling those pieces together. I mean, mainframe, Dave, you did the IBM Z13 launch earlier this year, and it's interesting to see all the, all the pieces going on in the mainframe. Era. Actually, I got a, got a little Twitter discussion going last night because what is the hottest technology in tech? Well, it's Docker, and you know what's another place that you can run Docker? Well, let's take an IBM Z13, run Z Linux on top of it, put containers on top of it. We've come full circle in the IT world. What started with the mainframe is now back on the mainframe, and so uh, you know a lot of stuff to cover here. Well, you know, uh, mainframe cycles are very long. The R&D cycle in a mainframe is longer than the typical x86 cycle. We're talking several years. Uh, a lot of money goes into R&D. The January announcement of the Z13 uh, is a big boost, in my opinion, for IBM, Stu, and it's going to help with earnings. People don't talk much about the mainframe, um, but if you think about what IBM has done in rationalizing its systems business, systems and storage business, storage has been in decline for a number of years. Uh, IBM has had challenges turning R&D into productive product. Uh, IBM outsourced an, uh, uh, its storage to a number of companies, NetApp, uh, LSI, uh, and others over the years, and then really in the last decade has had to sort of scramble and make up for that. And so that is a business that's been in transition. Jamie Thomas took over you know, a year and a half, I think, actually uh, a year ago, Edge, or two years ago, I got to get my yeah, it time It was last series. year. Last yeah. year, year, so she's been on for about a year, uh, a little over a year, really pushing toward a software-defined world for storage and then she comes out of the Tivoli group. Uh, IBM jettisoned the x86 business, so it's chasing profits, not revenue now. So it puts pressure on the, on the, on the revenue line, but it should help with the gross margin and, 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 and consequently the profit piece. The Z mainframe cycle should be a big boost to IBM. Uh, and then of course there's the power, and power is like fighting it out. Uh, you know, there's, there's always an alternative, right? There's always going to be a, a, a room for a number two. Intel's obviously number one in the enterprise. And power has found a niche in high performance computing, analytics, big data, um, driving power into little endian so that it has uh, you know, binary compatibility with a lot of the applications. The Z is really interesting, Stu. About 25% of the workloads that run on Z run on Linux. And so what IBM has done is they brought the open Linux platform to the mainframe and allowing people to develop modern Linux-based apps uh, on top, building apps on top of that Linux platform and even converting, migrating people into that platform. So you'll hear some stories about that. The big thing from a financial perspective, Stu, is mainframes are highly profitable for IBM. They drag not only hardware, but they drag software, they drag database, they drag middleware, they drag services. And so, so I would expect that 2015 should be a strong year for IBM's 
you know, so-called hardware division, which has really been struggling over the last couple of years. Yeah, and, and Dave, some of the things I'm looking out at this show, you mentioned last year, I, IBM took the x86 business and gave it all over to Lenovo, so what is the repercussions of that? How does the converged infrastructure and hyper-converged uh, businesses uh, you know, still have a play with IBM? Because L Lenovo took over the server business and especially hyper-convergence really sits on that x86 platform. And you know, what about the cloud? Uh, you know, right now, uh, going on this week is the Cloud Foundry Summit in San Francisco. IBM is a big presence there because Cloud Foundry is a big piece of what Bluemix is and that whole push. Uh, we've been having a lot of discussions inside the Wikibon offices uh, about PaaS and uh, what's happening there. And, and IBM's a big player there. And if you talk about middleware at this conference, you know, PaaS really is that new middleware taking over really the application life cycle, if you will. Uh, so, you know, how does all of that fit in with all of the other discussions that we have and, you know, storage power and Z? Well, it's interesting, Stu. I was just talking to David Floyer about this, and you were in our research meeting on Friday, and we were talking about sort of helping our practitioners within the Wikibon community better understand the whole PaaS, what it's all about, where it fits, and we're trying to simplify it for people, for not only for ourselves, but for our audience. And essentially, you've got sort of three classes. I was talking to David Floyer about this earlier today, and we're just about to publish this. Um, you, you, you've got what I call IIS Plus. In other words, you're buying infrastructure, you're buying servers, and then you're adding a PaaS layer on top of that. So, uh, you know, Amazon's the perfect example. You've got another example, which is more, more the Cloud Foundry Bluemix approach, where you're, you're going into an application development environment, a PaaS layer, and that essentially defines the infrastructure underneath it. And then you've got a third level, which is what I call SaaS minus. So it's, it's like a Salesforce or a service now that essentially has a platform and an application, but they're providing a development platform for the world to then extend those applications. And of course, Red Hat's in the mix and, and, and uh, everybody wants a piece of that action. Why is that, Stu? Yeah, so I mean, Dave, we know the whole reason that infrastructure exists is to deliver those applications. And that whole modernization of applications is one of the biggest challenges we have in IT today. Uh, if, you, if you look at where we are with applications, you know, applications run your business. And you know, companies are looking for new ways to accelerate how they can get new business value, have business units, you know, leverage the data that we have. So you know, here at the IBM show, we've been talking for the last couple of years, is it's not about storing your data, it's leveraging that data and it's analytics and new business you know, value that we can create uh, often with new applications, the cloud native apps if you will, mobile applications and analytics that leverage that data, which is the whole reason why this whole space exists. Um, another big story that we're going to hear today, uh, this week is Flash. I mean, if you're in the systems and storage business and you're not talking about Flash, then you've, you've been asleep at the wheel. Um, IBM, as you know, Stu, acquired uh, Texas Memory Systems. They, they subsequently, initially were using the SAN volume controller to provide the stack for TMS. They've now integrated uh, into uh, the StoreWise product line uh, with an all-flash array. Uh, Gartner just published it, its numbers. Uh, IBM was number three, EMC was number one, Pure was number two, IBM was number three. Uh, ahead of NetApp, ahead of Hitachi, ahead of HP and others. That's a very fast growing market. It's growing at 50% a year. Um, and it really is going, we think, going to overtake uh, not only the SSD space and the hybrid space, but the entire spinning disk market. Yeah, absolutely. So the T TMS always had some good performance uh, numbers there, and uh, you know there's a lot of competition in this space. It's moving hot. Uh, as we've said many times, Dave, we're six years into kind of this wave of flash, and we think we'll see you know way more innovation and change happening in the next four years than we did in the last six. So I'm interested in people's opinions on this. Uh, we've got a number of analysts. John Toigo is coming on later. Uh, we've got Stephen Pratt coming on. He's the CTO of Centerpoint Energy. A lot of practitioners, a lot of customers. A lot of IBM execs, so keep it right there, everybody. Stu and I will be back with our next guest right after this brief break.